at a, as a hold co, do you do capital allocation? How do you know when to take earnings or distribute them? This is a total Twitter question. Oh, we're going to get through a few I studied the Twitter question. I know just you so did. I, just so I know. <laughs> um, look, I think uh, in in my course, by the way, I'm here to, I got to promote my course. Oh, that uh, That is, if you look on the screen... <laughs> And you go hold co course. We're about to get there. <laughs> it's super funny because every time I talk about the course and stuff. By the way, I made the course because I was so sick of answering people's questions for free. And like I was just like, okay, fine. If you would like the answers to these questions, I will give. I you could pay me. Anyway, <laughs> um, and it's also great because it selects out. Like if you f- can find somebody willing to pay twenty five hundred dollars for a course, like they're going to be some people with some wherewithal, and they're going to be truly motivated rather than the people who are just like DMing me yep. random questions. Um, but anyway, the you know the way I think about it in terms of capital allocation, capital calls, and how that works with the companies is there's a level of there's a hurdle rate that is risk adjusted on a per company basis. So I will take a look and say, okay, um, you know I want to have an IRR, for example, of X or a yield of Y on my overall portfolio, and then I will adjust that up or down depending upon what the company's kind of risk profile is. Got it. And then if they are, you know, investing below that, they need to send money up to, you know, Papa Gerd. Uh, and if they don't, if they have a great place to deploy it, which most of them do, um, then they can keep reinvesting capital and we'll go from there. And as far as if they do have somewhere, is there a hurdle or a certain return that you want that does it have to be in year one or do they just have to convince you it's good or how do you know it's a good place to deploy capital? Yeah. Um, so there's there's early on with the smaller stuff, um, we will be doing a lot of, you know, wet finger in the air kind of, yeah. does this make sense by feel? As the companies get more mature, um, we will do more sophisticated kind of sensitivity analysis around those. So, um, you know, our fireworks business is very sophisticated in terms of how we do underwriting of deals at this point, like they'll build LBO models or not, not LBO models, but leverage models in terms of site development and estimations, um, all that kind of stuff. And so we have a hurdle rate for them. And then the individual businesses will an- analyze those kind of on a per initiative standpoint. All right. We're going to get to the course in just a second. That's fine. <laughs> we promoted it already. I, that's the point. No, actually, I actually, <laughs> I think I, we're going to tie what we just talked about with Holdco with being a creator. And the plan was to kind of bring it down to this thing, but Um, you have, when you have 11 companies, you have 11 CEOs, 11 CEOs are what's the typical profile of a CEO, hard charging, um, uh, you know, uh, maybe a little ego in there, maybe a little, I think I'm right. Uh, all great people, but I guess the question becomes what happens if you're at odds or you don't seem to me to be somebody that you get at odds and maybe. We're going to be mad and fight over it, but like when things, when you just do not align with what the CEO wants to do, are you ever, as, as your system set it up to where that filters it out really far in advance to where you're not being surprised by something? Because once you have 11 personalities, it seems to me like there could always be something where I was like, all right, we're in severe disagreement here. How have you thought through that? Yeah. So I think having an aggressive interaction model with one-on-ones, being on the same page, you know, and them understanding kind of where we're each at in terms of what we want to achieve out of the business is is the right model there to not be surprised by anything. Yep. Uh, Is there a time in which we get to a point in which I will occasionally say, okay, we're there's a there's a tie here, and guess who wins? That's usually that that it happens, but it's rare. It's maybe a couple times a year. And the reason is, is, you know, A, you try to avoid that by having those, you know, kind of interactions ahead of time. But the the second reason is, is like, I really want the CEOs to be taking ownership of the business, right? I want them to feel like they're in control of it. So it's yeah. very rare that things get to a point where I'm like, no. Like we're doing it my way. Yeah. And um, that's by design. It's because I'm gonna put ultimate trust in them. And I think that creates a pretty healthy dynamic because they all take it super seriously. Yep. They take, they're like, man, I'm really being trusted with this. Yep. Like I need to really bust my ass um, because I mean, we're putting faith in, in them. And you had done a thread on it at one point. I think it was how to hire a CEO, but are there best practices for how to uh, incentivize a CEO? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think there's different models in which you can do it and they can get tailored by the situation. So if you say somebody's coming on really early and they're a co-founder CEO, like 
a great way to have them is give them equity from day one, right? They can yeah. share in the risk. Um, if somebody's coming into an established business, it's oftentimes more difficult to give them equity. Um, so the the model that I actually use um, is is a bonus style structure that is incentives based around them being aligned with the uh, interests of the owner. So say, if, for example, if the investment thesis to own a business is maximizing multiple for time of exit five years from now, um, and we don't care about profit, you can incentivize them around that. Or if it's healthy growth, right, you can, you can create an incentive around there. So I did a thread on that. Um, it basically ends up being a two by two matrix where it's yeah. like EBITDA versus revenue. Um, and I use that with, you know, pretty much everybody at the C level in, in my, in my companies now. Okay. Um, all right. We're going to now take it back to kind of the top on just on hold codes. So when, when I think of a hold code, just so we're all speaking the same language, but I think you said there's multiple different types. Some people like to think a hold co is like, oh, you just don't do a whole lot. It's just this entity and it owns all these businesses and they just, um, and maybe Warren Buffett's made it seem easier than, than others, maybe not. But to your, in your opinion, what is a holding company? Because I, as I watch people on Twitter, I sometimes see these people that say they have holding companies, but then I watch what they're tweeting. I'm like, you're an operator, dude. Right. This is a fake hold company. This is an operating business. Yeah. So to you, what is a hold company or what are the different types of hold companies? Yeah. So, you know, at its core level, a holding company is a business that owns multiple independent businesses mm -hmm. with leaders that are empowered to run those businesses, you know, subsidiaries. Um, and there are different flavors of those. There's everything from like a Warren Buffett style, what I call a pure uh, holding company, which is like this. And that's what I do. It's like a disparate set of unique assets. And you may even run different strategies. Um, and then there's all the way at the other end of the spectrum where you may only buy, say, things targeting the same industry, or you may only buy this, like, you know, um, our software business Dur is a hold co, um, but it's a different type of hold co because they only buy B2B software companies. Right. So <laughs> like they can run a different model than what I do when I'm where I'm totally you know distributed in terms of my hold co. And then there's roll ups, which I also consider hold co's where you can have, you know, you buy a, three different chains of, you know, oil chain. Uh, oil change places. That's a roll up that, you know, technically could be uh, considered a hold co. And I, I consider it that. And ultimately, I think the difference is between an operating business and a hold co is what the CEO does every day, which to your point, people think, oh, you just kind of hang out and you go to Dairy Queen and you drink your Diet Cokes and you hang out. And like most, most every hold co operator I know operates more like I do where we're working our ass off Yeah, because we don't own Union Pacific and all this <laughs> stuff that Warren Buffett. Yeah. I wouldn't do anything either if I own Warren Pacific, you know, Geico. And, but guess what? Like the baby boomers bought all those companies. They're not around anymore. Yeah. So, so the rest of us Gen X, we got to figure it out. And, uh, <laughs> But in, in my case, like what the CEO does all day is capital allocation, coaching, supporting, monitoring, like, so I'm the operation I'm doing is supporting those CEOs and it's a full-time job. Is there a capacity where you just can't take on anymore? Uh, so what people mostly tend to do is, uh, you end up, uh, creating like people underneath you portfolio to take manager. Por portfolio managers. Yeah. Will so, you do that? Uh, possibly. I mean, I've got a lot of room to scale right now just cause my model is like, really low, low touch. Right. Um, I mean, low, uh, low time requirement. Like I just go to board meetings and do one-on-ones and, you know, like say per company, I would spend two to three hours a week max. Okay. But that, okay. But to be fair, even if it's two, that's 22 hours a week. If it's three hours a week, that's 33 hours. Absolutely. Yeah. But I'm only at 11. So but then you've got threads, right? We're going to get to <laughs> what is a week in the life of Girdley look like, but, um, but in fairness, let's just say you added four more companies, then you're kind of at a spot where maybe you have to hire that next person. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. 